ladies and gentlemen a very good evening and welcome to the earnings conference call of efc limited for q1 fy25 we have with us today mr umesh sahai founder and managing director of efc india limited and mr nikhil bhuta whole time director of efc india limited as a reminder all participants lines will be in the listen only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes should you need assistance during this conference call please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone i would now like to hand over the conference to mr nikhil bhuta whole time director to give this opening remarks and discuss further on the q1 fy25 performance thank you and over to you sir thank you moderator good afternoon everyone uh, i am nikhil bhuta director of efc india limited i would like to extend a warm welcome to all of you joining our earning conference call today we humbly value your ongoing interest and support in our company uh, efc limited efc india limited as you know is a real estate as a service company operating through three major verticals one is the managed office business where we have managing about 2.25 million square feet uh, of assets with 57 sites under management across seven cities we have a uh, uh, sitting capacity of about 47000 seats and over as on 30th june uh, 2024 we obviously have two other verticals one is the design and build uh, turnkey contracting verticals and second is the ek design industries limited which is the furniture manufacturing vertical through this three vertical we operate as an uh, integrated real estate service providers uh, in today's call uh, we'll review our financials and operational performance for q1 for, for the financial year 24 25 we will also highlight key strategic decisions made by our group and share our future outlook for q1 efc india limited has achieved impressive financial results with consolidated revenue reaching approximately rupees 105.28 crores and ebitda of around rupees 49.62 crores and a profit after tax of rupees 15.77 crores this results underscores our resilience strategic focus and the management's unwavering commitment to driving the company's growth let us also look at the revenue breakdown business segment wise where the rental segment generated approximately rupees 66.79 crores accounting for about 63.44% of our total revenue in comparison the design and build turnkey contracting business contributed rupees 35.3 crores representing approximately 36.56% of the total revenue at efc we create synergies through our dynamic workspaces managed office operations under the brands such as efc uh, which is an enterprise solution sprint which is a business center solutions and big box which is a, a a new entrant to our you know bouquet of brands that we operate with Additionally we offer exquisite furniture through Egg Design Industries Limited and provide meticulous interior design under White Hills Interior Limited. Starting from the managed office business sector we have significantly enhanced our capacity this quarter by increasing the area under leasehold rights by about 3 lakh square feet adding over 7000 seats across seven centers and four existing cities where we we were already operating additionally we have acquired approximately 80000 square feet of property at prime location in pune this is an freehold property that we have acquired under ownership which will be developing and leasing under our managed office business model this acquisition has the potential to generate an annual revenue of about 14.4 14.40 14 crore rupees as on 30th june 2025 we are having about 2.20 2.25 million square feet of area under management we have total 57 sites under our management across seven cities in india with total seating capacity across crossing over 47000 mark in design and build division we have secured contract exceeding rupees 75 crores during this quarter 
across various business sectors and are currently negotiating additional contracts valued over 100 crores. Notably, one of the biggest achievements that we uh, you know, undertook during this first quarter was successfully completing over 100,000 square feet of project for CoForge in just 62 days, demonstrating our efficiency and capability in delivering large-scale projects. In furniture manufacturing segment, we have secured regulatory approvals to establish an expansive manufacturing facility on an over three acres in Fursungi, Haveli, Taluka, Pune. This state-of-the-art plant boasts cutting-edge machinery and high-tech QC lab and is strategically subdivided into five dedicated manufacturing shop floors. The facility includes a modern customer experience center and is supported by an efficient support infrastructure for seamless operation and management. Our workforce at the manufacturing facility of over 200 people will drive the plant's operation during the following quarter of this financial year and going forward. With plant and machinery configured for peak efficiency, production trials are slated to begin during August 2024, with commercial production set to be launched by September 2024. On acquisition front, AFC Limited, a key unlisted subsidiary of our company, has strategically acquired 51% stake in Big Box Venture Private Limited. As a result, Big Box Venture is now a step-down subsidiary of AFC India Limited. Big Box Venture, with its impressive portfolio of over 3,000 seats in Pune, is aggressively expanding into NCR region, uh, Ahmedabad and Kolkata, significantly enhancing our overall market presence. Additionally, we have also incorporated a real estate investment trust, REIT, to establish small and medium REIT with a substantial corpus of rupees 499 crores, which will further strengthen our investment capabilities and market reach. Additionally, during this fast growth journey, we are more conscious about best-in-class governance accordingly. We have conducted an ESG gap audit to, to identify areas for improvement and appointed a dedicated ESG team to ensure compliances, beginning with the establishment of the highest level of governance, the G power of the ESG. We are actively implementing initiatives to reduce greenhouse gas emissions by utilizing green power and establishing tools for effective electricity consumption control. With this brief, I thank you all. And now I now open the forum for question and answer session. Moderator, please, could you take over in this? Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchdown telephone. If you wish to withdraw yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Manav Jain from SP Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hello, thank you for the opportunity. Uh, so my first question would be regarding the furniture segment. So we were uh, going to start the production from uh, this year. So could you uh, uh, give some light regarding that segment and uh, how would be the selling go? Would it be internally or would we be selling to other people as well? Yes, um, thank you and welcome. Uh, yes, uh, regarding the furniture segment, uh, I'd like to uh, update you all that uh, you know we are just slated to do the commercial trial uh, during this month. I mean, in next uh, week's time, and uh, the full-fledged production the commercial uh, activity would start in the month of September. That is the coming month. Okay. Uh, with regards to uh, you know the uh, where would be selling our products. So yes, obviously, you know, as you as you know, or as you have observed, that all our businesses are quite integrated, as well as standalone as we use. So they are not dependent on our existing businesses. 
yes, but our existing business would become an anchor client to them for sure. So as far as we are concerned, uh, we are you know looking at right now two major segments, residential and commercial uh, sector, to uh, you know focus on manufacturing the product for those sectors. Uh, so in the commercial sectors, obviously chairs and the workstations, etc. In the residential, you have different types of loose furnitures which goes in for furnishing the residential um, uh, premises. So we will be doing both. We will be doing for external clients. We will also be tying up with large uh, distributors. Uh, we'll be appointing distributor across. We'll also be attempting to do some sort of white labeling where there is a significant um, you know, brand presence uh, and a significant uh, you know, underlying contract that we can secure. So uh, it would be a wholesome business and it would be, you know, uh, Mano, that it will be like a standalone business in on its own. Right. So uh, AFC is concerned, they will become one of its customers, not beyond that. Okay, got it, got it. And what would be the top line that we, are, we would uh, expect once the production starts the, uh, September? So as you could see that this financial year will be, uh, you know, will be operational only for six months. And naturally, you know, the first three months would be, you know, you would appreciate that uh, those are the months where there'll be, you know, more trial and errors because, you know, you are operating those machines for the first time and you're trying to take the ma ma maximum benefit on the efficiency. So, I mean, we still believe that looking at the pipelines, even the EFC has, uh, you know, we should be able to uh, at least achieve uh, more than about 50 to 75 crore easily uh, during this financial year only, uh, during the six months that we are talking about, which is a very conservative number, to be very honest. Because, you know, that is the kind of number I'm just talking that even EFC can handle alone. So forget about if I'm able to kind of get any new businesses, which my sales team, which is already operational and have already targeted meeting you know, few of the brands for a white labeling business and few of the large consumers uh, for, you know, for, you know, in some of the consumers in the hotel industry, some of the consumers uh, who are like a large distribution across. So those, those uh, you know, orders are in the discussions. Uh, but on a conservative basis, we should definitely be in a position to achieve anything around 50 to 75 crore of turnover in the furniture manufacturing division this year. Okay. Got it. Uh, thank you for that. And uh, regarding the, we recently added two lakh square feet uh, of space at different locations uh, across India. So, what would be the space uh, used for? Are those seed additions, or they are the new centers that uh, are, that could be built in the future? No, no. These are the centers where we are already have already either added the seeds or are under uh, development. So, what I mean to say is that. Uh, over about uh, uh, over about 300,000 square feet have been added during this quarter, and uh, with that we've been able to develop about 7,000 odd seats across seven different centers. Right, right, got it. So yeah. my last question would be: Are we maintaining the guidance for doubling the top line by FI25? Yes, I mean we are we are all geared up to do so. I mean that's that's the plan, and that has been the overall. Uh, uh, and that's how the aggressive, some of the actions that the companies are taking, we are completely geared up for that. And uh, I think uh, by end of this quarter, we would be in a much better position to confirm that position. But yes, as of now, we are 100% geared up to achieve that target. Okay, thank you so much for the answers. Uh, and all the best. Thank you so much, Malo. Thank you. The next question is from Delina. Pranav Srimal from Pink Wealth Advisory. Please go ahead. Yeah, I hope I'm audible. Hello. Hi. Yeah, uh, congrats, sir, on the great quarters. I just had a couple of questions. So one would be, uh, we have uh, almost projected that we're going to add around uh, the new seats. By when will those new seats be operational, these 47,000 seats that are under development? Uh, sorry, I mean, your voice was coming. You said how many see when will be operational? You said something I didn't yes, know. Yes. Uh, there are seats and a development of around 4,278. By when will these seats be operational? This, this seats would be already, I mean, some of it more, almost be already operational or will be operational during the second quarter already. Okay, so majority of them will be operational by the end of Q2. Yes, 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 yes. 
okay so uh, revenue will start coming in from q3 for around 6 months absolutely absolutely got it and second sir we have recently acquired the uh, property in pune just wanted to figure out is that also going to be one of the office spaces yes absolutely that's the idea mm-hmm. just that uh, you know the the instead of landlord i will be my own landlord and uh, you know we'll be operating only the managed office business from there which is our core business so the property acquisition is just that you know the you know right now what we do is that strategically if we are able to get a property at a price where you know practically i am just replacing my rental with the emi then it kind of helps me to build the assets alongside rather than you know keep paying to the landlord and then completely remain at their mercy at the end of the fifth year so that's that's the strategy which we are using and depending upon you know the amount of uh, exposure that our balance sheet permits will definitely you know kind of take in kind of an lrd structure on our uh, on our balance sheet and acquire these assets but eventually use it only for our managed office operation okay so was this uh, property acquired through the rit or was this done through efc alone so uh, like i said that efc acquisition would depend entirely upon you know the debt equity ratio that we as an organizations are comfortable with and obviously obviously the standard that one is to follow so we will not be acquiring all the property under efc with regards to the property acquisition and the reit is concerned uh mm-hmm. you know the idea behind the using reit as a structure is it's a win win proposition for both the investors in the reit the unit holders in the reit and for us because what happens is the investors in the reit would be able to generate a yield which is better than a standard leasing rate when it comes to the yield generation from managed office operations correct so let's say if you are just uh, in the taking a property and leasing out to one customer uh, your standard lease rentals are around 7% maybe maximum while if you consider it under a managed office operation this can substantially be increased because you know after paying the rent to the landlord i am still making my money okay mm-hmm. so as an efc i will be making my money in terms of the operation fee that i will be you know charging to the reit and the investor in the reit will also be making more money than otherwise they would have invested in a commercial property for a rental yield so under reit we are trying to you know acquire assets by raising capital under reit we will also be obviously sponsoring the we are the sponsor to the reit so we will be putting our own money also and we will invite uh, contribution from other potential investors and uh, we will operate this uh, a, you know uh, uh, some of the properties Uh, under this structure and uh, have a, we'll be managing them so we'll be virtually controlling the operation of those properties also got it got it sir and uh, yeah just one last question uh, and uh, and the design and build uh, space we have received uh, contracts worth 75 cr so are it including coforge or excluding coforge so coforge contract was received last the quarter Uh, uh-huh. this quarter the coforge execution had taken place this 75 crore is excluding coforge contract and uh, the uh, realization will happen within this year or will there be some overlap uh, sorry I'm, 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 can you repeat again sorry yeah, the 75 cr uh, will that be realized within this fy or uh, will that will there be some overlap no 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 this is it will get realized this quarter quarter but generally what happens as you would appreciate that you know each contract once you the entire cycle of you really getting the contract getting the documentations in place and then the mobilization and the execution that cycle generally spread over two quarters uh, depending upon the timing at which you have able to secure the contract so the, let's say if i secure a contract for 75 crore in first quarter obviously some of them have been concluded in the first quarter and the rest of them would get concluded in the second quarter got it got it and this one last one question uh, from which city are we seeing the maximum uh, demand coming from or is it still spread across evenly uh, you are talking on the dnb division or on the managed office this uh, managed office managed office managed office you know i mean as you probably know the sector then about nine cities in the country are the prominent cities mm. 
uh, which is uh, you know the standard NCR region. On, on the southern side, you have Bangalore, Hyderabad, Chennai. Uh, on the western side, you have obviously Gujarat, Ahmedabad, and then in the you know in Maharashtra, you have Bombay, Pune, and on the eastern, you have Kolkata. So these are these are obviously the major cities. Uh, some of the two-tier cities are also coming up well, uh, primarily because of certain specific developments happening on those cities and some specific types of customers, you know, getting uh, oc occupying those areas in those uh, cities, like you know, cities like Indore, cities like cities like Coimbatore, cities like uh, Chandigarh. They are all really coming up well. Uh, but as of now, uh, looking at that, our overall portfolio and our overall presence. We still believe that uh, for at least uh, foreseeable future, we'll remain uh, focused in these nine cities. While, uh, like I said, you know, the cities like Ahmedabad, we never wanted to go alone, but our clients took us there. So tomorrow, our client may took us to some other two tire cities. So we are open to that proposition, depending upon the viability. But uh, uh, in terms of focus, we, our focus will remain on these nine cities. Got it, thank you. Thank you so much, and best of luck. Welcome. Thank you so much. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. In order to ensure that the management is able to address the questions from all the participants, please limit your questions to two per participant. I repeat, please limit your questions to two per participant. Thank you. The next question is from the line of. Rahul Matlani from Reco Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, a great set of numbers. I had a Thank first you. question. Uh, the acquisition which we've done with uh, Big Box, how much will this contribute to our uh, revenues and numbers? So, uh, when we acquired Big Box, the Big Box was already doing. Uh, around two crore a month of top line. Uh, so that was the kind of top line they were already adding on a monthly basis. Uh, that's with about 28, 2900 seats. Uh, since our acquisition, they've already kind of added about 2000 more seats because if, you know, this is a, you know, if this is a company which uh, does a lot of business where they search a client first, and then do the you know business back to back by you know identifying a property, so that gives a lot of stability in terms of the cash flow that they will be able to generate and the occupancy level that they'll be able to you know provide. Uh, so I think uh, that's really going to help us going forward. And uh, they do operate right now under uh, small sized uh, uh, areas. I mean, what I when I say small size, I mean 10, 15, 000, 20, 000 square feet of uh, you know, space that they take it on lease and then accordingly they further, uh, uh, you know, sublease to the uh, potential customers on uh, managed office business. But uh, the overall philosophy, the culture are all matching and aligning with our group and uh, we are really expecting, and I mean, just to give you an idea, the total contracted, remaining contract value uh, of this contract that they have with 3,000 seats is roughly around 86 crore. So I mean, I'm just saying at the time of acquisition only they had a contract, remaining contract value of more than 86,000 crore. And uh, with the new additions, uh, it will certainly keep adding to our top lines and the bottom line as well. So and just to follow up to the same, uh, what are the seat expansion targets you set for, uh, you know, big boxes? and uh, EFC together? So we allow Big Box to operate independently and uh, it's... Uh... Okay. Okay. That really helps. Uh, just a second question and a final one. Uh, so where are we on the read uh, pro progress? And... Yeah, so we have already filed the application. Uh, there, there is a, so there's a couple of rounds of... Hello, sir. I think we lost you, sir. Yeah. yeah. Management, we are unable to hear you. Ladies and gentlemen, we have lost the management line connection. Please stay connected while we reconnect them.
Thank you. gentlemen please stay connected the call will begin in next few minutes Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for patiently holding. We have the management line back on the call. Thank you, sorry uh, for this uh, uh, interruption, but please can we carry on? So I was uh, explaining about the status on the on the REIT. So as I said that you know the REIT application has been already filed with the SEBI. Uh, a round of discussion has already happened with the regulators, and they are really happy with the fact that. We are the only one who is not from the 
a fractional ownership platform and they're really excited to you know kind of uh, extend their all support and uh, we are expecting that probably you know by end of this month or beginning of uh, september we should uh, get an approval for the registration of our read all right so just to quickly follow up on the same um, has there been any finalization on the yield which will be offered uh, you mean to say in terms of the properties that we are identifying no in terms of the reit uh, like what sort of returns you know can investors expect in the fund reit yeah so i mean in terms of returns yes it will be uh, you know we have not really prepared the offer document uh, which is under preparation okay. right now uh, but okay. i think in about uh, you know by end of this quarter we should be ready with all those uh, numbers and uh, it will sub- certainly significantly differentiating than a standard ease product uh, you know which is what generally the main reits are working at uh so it will certainly be better than them uh but in terms of exact numbers uh, i mean i'll be able to tell you by the time the off documents are completely ready fair enough thank you so much for all the best for the coming quarter thank you so much thank you so much and sorry for the disturbance thank you the next question is from the line of rishab gang from sachiti family office please go ahead uh hello sir am i audible Yes, please, Dr. Shah. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, thank you for the opportunity. You know, so I want to understand like uh, more on the five-year vision, right? On the kind of business you would want to build across uh, your different segments, and uh, possibly uh, some kind of numbers relevant to each segment, like how big you would like to make them, uh, and uh, would want to know which new geography you would like to enter in future, and any more adjacencies uh, or segments that you plan to enter into. or think about that they are interesting yes sir right in terms of overall outlook uh, going forward uh, you know uh, rishab we are looking at about and add, keep adding about 30 to 40000 seats on the year on year basis for next i would like to right now say at least for 3 years uh, that's the plan that management has already kind of put in place internally and the way the the, the managed office business and the flex office market is growing Uh, and the overall economy is also supporting the same we are fairly confident that for next coming 3 years you know we'll be able to really keep adding the seats you know i mean you would appreciate that adding seats is not a big challenge the challenge is in terms of whether there is a demand sufficiently available and 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 we are very confident that for the coming 3 years that would be the scenario that uh, we'll be able to easily absorb more than 30 40000 seats that we'll be able to kind of you know put in place and uh, with the with the policy that we have that we generally you know price our product at a reasonable level anything between around 6500 to 8000 rupees depending upon the area locations etc uh that's the broad target with regards to the managed office business uh with regards to uh, you know the the dnb division and the furniture market as far as the dnb division is concerned we are very up with because you know if you would appreciate there are hardly any pan india players and organized players uh, who have a capability to carry out such large contracts uh, in uh, across india uh, single handedly uh, and uh, the way the growth is happening the kind of response that we are getting from large customers we are very very confident that uh, you know with the economy also supporting the real estate sector on the commercial leasing business side we should be in a position to really achieve or rather keep doubling our targets year on year uh, than what we have achieved last year which is a very conservative and realistic estimate that we can make looking at the kind of orders that we have in hand and the orders in pipeline with regards to the furniture the manufacturing business uh, you know we are very confident that uh, by end of 26 we should be crossing around 250 to 300 crore top line uh that is what is expected uh, from that business and that the unit that we have really set up right now so by fy26 we should be in a position to cross 300 crore plus of business on the furniture manufacturing side in terms of geographical expansion as i mentioned earlier that will our focus for next couple of years would remain the nine cities uh, having said so uh, we are clearly aware about the new markets getting developed new tier 2 cities getting developed and uh, you know we'll be closely watching them and 
you know, will definitely support our existing clients if they want to really move to those uh, region and kind of, you know, asking us to kind of help them set up the infrastructure there. Uh, but in terms of our own direct focus would definitely remain around these nine cities uh, going forward in the coming three years. And I hope I've kind of covered up all your questions in this. Yeah, uh, yeah. actually, one more question was there. Like, uh, any more adjacencies, right, or segment that you plan, uh, plan to enter into which are related to your business, maybe in the, which, or maybe which you find interesting at the moment? As of now, we are genuinely speaking, really focused on opportunities on hand. Uh, and uh, I mean, we believe that this segment already we have kind of covered all the uh, you know aspects of uh, our core business that the managed office or the office leasing business. So as of now, uh, there is nothing that is on plan or nothing on card. Uh, you know, we are in business and it's a dynamic environment, right? So opportunities may throw up and uh, we may consider them, but as of now, there is no such plan, please. Uh, you know, I also wanted to understand more on the inorganic growth. Like, uh, uh, when we when we have acquired one company right now, so what is our view? Like, would we be acquiring more such uh, similar kind of businesses across India? And how do we evaluate uh, these businesses? Like, any parameter linked to acquisition cost per seat? Or how do you evaluate buy or uh, build or buy decisions for uh, such businesses? Oh, no, very, very... Great questions. I mean, yes, inorganic growth is necessary uh, for any organization like us who is growing well right now and, uh, you know, who has been able to generate sufficient internal accrual. So, yes, inorganic growth uh, will be on card and we will be looking at such opportunities where, uh, you know, uh, we could acquire and step in and play some strategic role uh, while expanding our strength. So in terms of when we get into acquiring such proper, you know, uh, uh, you know, potential companies, uh, we definitely wouldn't like to give them an, a situation of an exit. Okay, we would mm-hmm. definitely like to associate with them to do. Uh, how do we really, uh, you know, associate in a manner that we can really help them to grow further? You know, and how do we really? Uh, you know, associate so that we are in a position to fuel their growth plan as well. So it has to become a win-win situation. If I go into a pure vanilla acquisition deal, then, you know, my cash outflow and my acquisition cost would become too uh, high and that might not be a viable proposition uh, considering, uh, you know, the, the, the current situation in the market, you know, the, the industry is doing very good. And if I try to make a deal right now to acquire a business completely, in which is doing fabulously well and it is also growing at a very good space, then the acquisition cost is going to go very high. But I have to look for such opportunities like Bitbox, who are at a reasonable scale and now now looking at growing further. And that growth could be fueled by the kind of overall infrastructure that we've got. So we've got what do we really have to offer? We have to offer a DNB division, which is fully functional, fully capable of, you know, handling any kind of contract that is to be executed in a very limited period of time. Secondly, we have our own furniture manufacturing business. So that can kind of offers them a very, you know, customized and timely basis and uh, you know, price sensitive product to them. So that takes a win-win proposition to them to us. And that's how we try to acquire such companies, not by going into pure play, acquisition model because that becomes, uh, you know, you end up paying certain multiples or certain number of sales multiples or EBITDA multiples. And, uh, you know, that probably for our, doesn't work in our mindset. We are looking at a situation where we do strategic acquisition with some uh, growth fueling exercise that we can do for the the target companies. Mm. You know, if if, uh, if time enough, I would like to ask one more question. Like uh, for the properties that we are uh, trying to own and then run it as a, a space. So, what is the kind of IRR or return on investment do you expect to make post? Like, what is your leveraged returns on that? Like, what is the benchmark that beyond this you would like to do this? So, I mean, to be very honest, uh, you know, when we acquire a property, uh, we would obviously like to have acquire it at, like I said, at lowest possible cost, because, you know, I don't want to get into an acquisition where, you know, the difference between my EMI and difference with, and, and my payment to, 
and the rental around that is uh, is more than one percent or so. The arbitrage can't be more than that, because the moment I get into a higher arbitrage, then you know that acquisition is not efficient for me. So what you are looking at is uh, below seven percent kind of an uh, you know yield uh, kind of a property that I would like to uh, identify and acquire and. Uh, you know, kind of size that we are looking at and, uh, you know, the opportunities are there in the market. You know, the, all the past acquisitions that we have done are all on the similar uh, lines and on the philosophy. All right. Um, you know, um, for the furniture that we have, like the backward integration, has any other player also done that? And, you know, uh, what are the kind of entry barrier, right? Uh, like uh, for another office space to actually also backward integrate uh, to furniture like what are your views on that just uh, broad views so uh, uh, with with regards to whether anybody ha else has done that uh, to our best of our knowledge uh, we are not really uh, sure that anybody has done that uh, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, you know we are basically uh, we are one of the few i mean the only one i did like that so uh, we are operating as real estate as a service provider, and this integrated uh, solutions, I doubt that anybody else is providing. Number one, number two, uh, with regards to you know the the overall uh, furniture uh, business is concerned, uh, uh, we are uh, you know, we'll be able to expand into all the different you know categories that we are focusing on. Uh, and any other following questions you had on the furniture business? Yeah, I just want to understand, like, uh, how hard is it for uh, another player to actually start doing this backward integration for furniture, right? Uh, no, it's some qualitative it insights on it that. Yeah, it is, it is difficult. I mean, it's not an exercise that uh, one can just simply think of and just have access to capital so then you can just simply put it and you're able to manage it because you could understand that that's how the manufacturing sector and the service sectors are different. Uh, but fortunately, we've got a team of people. We've got experienced management. Our promoters have also historic experience of doing the, uh, you know, having understand the manufacturing sector. Mm. So it is not easy for sure. Uh, you got to have the right blend of team, and obviously that the right uh, type of opportunities on card available, uh, which enables you to, you know, kind of get into this. Uh, uh, expansion into the furniture manufacturing. Excellent, excellent. Thank you so much, sir, for the valuable insights. Really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from Dalaina Darshil Javeri from Crown Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, hello. Hi. Good evening, sir. Thank you so much for taking my question. Firstly, congratulations on a great set of results, sir. Uh, so Thank just you. like. One clarification, if I heard it correctly, uh, we are trying to double our top line by FY25. Was that, uh, did I hear that correctly, sir? Oh, yes. I mean, that's that's the endeavor, and that is the target that we have kept it for ourselves. Oh, oh uh, great. that's great to hear, sir. That's great to hear, sir. So, uh, just two questions. One, like now, when we add, uh, you know, furniture to our this, so what kind of EBITDA margins would you know we would be, you know, getting in that business, and what would be like a blended EBITDA for, you know, like when we do all three combined, so, you know, or any good margin differential in all three businesses, what would that be? So in the in the initial uh, vertical, the EBITDA margins are typically around 40%. Uh, obviously, it will take about six months for us to achieve that efficiency. Uh, but the standard thumb rule, as I said, in the furniture industry is about 40%. And that's what our costings are also looking at and the kind of market price that we can understand uh, based on the preliminary feasibility that we have carried out. Uh, with regards to the blended margin is concerned, um, you know, I mean, on a, on a managed office business, we do, uh, you know, about an EBITDA of about 30% on a, on a site level. Uh, and on the uh, on the DNB division, we do an EBITDA of about 15 to 17%, uh, or rather a little more about 17 to 19% on an EBITDA level, or 14 to 15% on a PAT level. Uh, so on a blended level, it will, it will still remain around 30%. On an EBITDA, uh, 
uh, this has a bit time talking on an in, indian gap uh, of, uh, accounting standards not as for the uh, the, uh, the reported which is indias where the bitas are generally higher so but if you look at on a business side on a cash flow level the cash flow level bitas blended would be around 30% oh okay so what would be the differential between reported and indian gap so or maybe could you just talk about pat numbers because that would be much more easier than so so that's what i'm saying that i'm i'm kind of telling you about uh, a number that is something which should be subject to tax which is 30% ebitda on my top line uh the reported ebitda i mean reported numbers like i said it's a little uh, a different situation because of the way the india's accounting standard operates we have to re- you know consider the different uh, you know uh, you know creation of that right of uh, use of assets etc and then amortizing them so that the rent expenses are rather than debited to the you know uh, before ebitda it gets debited post ebitda and hence the ebitda level increases but the pat level decreases okay okay uh, got it sir and so just like now we are talking about you know our three year plans where you know we are adding so many around 30000 seats a year and everything so what would be our vision for the next three years overall basis like our revenue growth because we are talking about very strong numbers even in furniture manufacturing as well as you know our bnb division so you know uh, could we you know like uh, in the next three years what would be our internal target to you know reach in terms of revenue so as i have explained you know internally we are looking at adding around 30 to 35000 seats at a rate of let's say about 7000 to 7500 rupees on an average basis uh, uh on the on the managed office business uh, over the over the three years time we should be in a position from around 50 to 75 crores to 300 crores of turnover that will be able to achieve in the furniture manufacturing business and on the dnb division we are absolutely confident that from the 100 crore 100 plus crore that is 113 crore that we achieve in fy24 we should easily be able to double it year on year because the way the responses and the the contracts that we are you know securing and the businesses are getting generated we are absolutely confident so i think uh, you know you can appreciate this is the broad the guideline that i can provide and this is the kind of numbers that we are really targeting at so oh, yeah yeah great you know great to you so that's very really great to you so just like one last final question like so like to just maybe it's part two part of question so just like with such a you know great opportunity for growth will there be you know very intense competitive you know ness with other players coming in and what kind of risks that you could see in our market so so uh, in, in terms of competition uh, you know the market is open yes uh, marketing is gearing up uh, people are uh, you know focusing on this segment but as you can see uh, there are handful of people who have a pan india presence and who are really have established themselves as a managed office players or somebody who is into the operation model uh, so uh, we you know while this this that the business has no entry barrier but to get to that efficiency level at which everybody like us is operating that's not going to be very easy for you know every new entrant and also to become a significant player that's not an easy task that you can achieve it over you know next one two years okay so uh, you would appreciate that we have reached to this scale this size this efficiency with our over 10 years of experience in this business so uh, it, it is it is uh, while it is easy to say there is no entry barrier but to achieve such efficiencies uh, and to to enable yourself to make continuous profitable uh, business uh, it is a challenge that one has to go through uh, you know and and we are very really, uh, cognizant of the fact that you know the overall risk which one can really foresee is is the risk related to the overall uh, downturn in the economy because otherwise if you see Uh, you know the way the real estate sector is growing and way the you know the business sectors are growing in terms of demand for leasing office office leasing uh, sector is continuously increasing only and the way the projections are uh, we are very confident that at least for 3 years that we are talking uh, there there uh, there isn't likely any downturn which is expected 
you know, I mean, bearing some force measure event which nobody can really estimate. Uh, we are very confident that we should uh, be able to sail through these three years confidently and, you know, on, on a growing trend only. So that, that's, that's very great to you also. Yeah, that's it from my side. So all the best for the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management is able to address the questions from all the participants, please limit your questions to two per participant. I repeat, please limit your questions to two per participant. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Bhaktesh Oza from Vyom Wealth Advisors. Please go ahead. Uh, so good evening, sir. So congratulations on a good quarter. So. My question is, uh, in the last phone calls and the management commentary, you have been mentioning that you are having competitive cost advantage when it comes to your company with your peers. So in order to, in, uh, because of that, you are gaining more advantage. So my question is, are we getting this cost advantage from PCC concept? Uh, because our promoters are holding a majority of stake in PCC concept. So are we getting manage offices spaces at a reasonable rent from TCC concepts. That's what I wanted to know. So TCC concepts is an independent company which is not, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, which is not kind of having any, you know, uh, business connections with the uh, EFC India Limited. And, uh, and uh, there is nothing that uh, we are deriving from them in terms of which adds to my cost uh, competitiveness. What adds to my cost efficiency is the integrated vertical that EFC India Limited has developed under the three verticals that it has developed, which is, as you know, my furniture manufacturing, my DNB division, and the managed office. So that is where we really control our costs, we bring our efficiencies, and maximize our profitability. Okay, so I was going through annual reports of PCC concepts and of FY23. So there, there were some related party transitions where EFC is uh, name was mentioned, and the amount was around two and after crore, two fifty crores. If I'm mistaking the amount, but can you please explain what those transactions were? Uh, I would, I would not. I mean, it's absolutely fine when uh, there are those transactions are arm's length transactions, and uh, if there is any connection, but that has nothing to do with the business of growth of this company. And I think we'll be able to address those things in the TCC conference call. Uh, but right now, as I'm saying, that there is no connection uh, from a business side that it is fueling my growth or, you know, enabling me to, you know, achieve any efficiency on my cost, etc. from um, that company is concerned. Okay. And so my last question is that TCC uh, is as uh, last question is for TCC only. So... This is a shutdown subject. If you don't mind, I mean, we can we'd rather focus on EFC India Limited at this point of time with the lack of time than getting into the other company, please. Yes, absolutely. But uh, the promoters are the same, mind. So that's the reason I wanted to know a bit about this. Regarding this particular company, that is why I'm requesting you, sir, that if we can focus on this, then because of the lack of time, we can focus on EFC India as a result, please. Okay, no, sir. That's it from mind. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Pancho. Thank you so much. The next question is from the line of Nirmal Murarka from VT Capital. Please go ahead. Mr. Nirmal, your line has been unmuted. Please go ahead with your question. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah. My question was regarding the rental income. So it has been slackish Q on Q. Despite increase of 5,000 feet in build, uh, build feet. So, what explains this? If you could please cal uh, clarify on that. Yeah, so there is an increment in seats uh, during the quarter, obviously, and uh, that's that's what every quarter we plan to. But generally, as you could appreciate, and if you see, uh, you know, our last year's trend, the quarter one and quarter two are the uh, are the quarters where we do maximum of development. And, uh, you know, that is where the number of seats are getting built up and, you know, and then they're coming up for occupation. So in during the third and the fourth quarter, where you see the maximum uh, occupations in terms of, uh, you know, the number of seats which have come up uh, and developed during these two quarters, 
and uh, then the revenue and uh, the, the the profitability accordingly shoots up. So that is the kind of trend. Then generally that uh, we follow in our business in this particular managed office business. So if you compare it with the last four quarters, you will realize that you know on the quarter on quarter uh, will be increasing, and on an average, if you see every quarter will be adding about three to four thousand seats on a on a billable seat. But in terms of capacity, it would be more, and that's how there will be a little lag between the, you know, the income and the expenses, which will happen on a quarter on quarter basis. But on an average basis, you will achieve, you will, you see that we will have a average profitability across uh, uh, all the quarters, matching up totally at an average of about 15 to 16 percent on an annual basis. Uh, actually, sir, I wanted to know from the revenue side, like if you're increasing seats, so why is the revenue flat you want to? That was my question. So that's, what, that's what I'm trying to explain, that during the first quarter, the, the yeah. seats and the developments are more there. Though all the seats which are getting developed, they might not get occupied immediately because you know there is a lag between the development and the occupation, correct? So let's say if yes. the seats are getting developed, they will come up for occupation. They will start getting built on a particular date, but it will not be built for the entire quarter. You, know, you appreciate because let us say yeah. I'm hypothetically yeah. I'm saying that I'm yeah yeah. No, my uh, yeah. no, I got that. But if you have added five thousand seats in this quarter, so like uh, have those not yet got occupied or like what is that split? Like, so they are occupied. Uh, they are occupied. But like I said, that let's say if. Like I'm saying that the most of the seats would get occupied during the month of June. So obviously okay. the incremental okay. revenue would come because you know there are the earlier months we'll do the developmental work and it will get get occupied during the month of let's say in the later half of May and the earlier half of June. So the additions would see uh, uh, on the revenue side would in start increasing from June onwards. Okay. So the overall quarter impact would not come in that particular quarter. And, and generally, the way we work, uh, sir, is that the fourth quarter of any financial year is the year in which we kind of uh, develop uh, and, and, and identify potential properties that we want to acquire or acquire mm -hmm. on a lease or terms over the coming financial year. And then we kind of get into you know acquiring those leasehold rights uh, starting from the last quarter of a particular financial year and beginning uh, of the next financial year. And then accordingly, the developmental cycle happens. And the third and the fourth quarter is the quarter where my revenue starts picking up, kicking in more. While on the other hand, because the developmentals are going on, certain fixed expenses, uh, certain standard uh, you know, uh, developmental expenses uh, keep getting debited to the PNL. So there will be a revenue mismatch to that extent. There will be, you see that the revenues are not going uh, increasing vis-a-vis uh, -vis the expenses are concerned and, and so and so forth. But on an average, once you look at a particular financial year, between the two quarters, initial two quarters and the, the later two quarters, uh, you know, the average uh, numbers would give an overall sense uh, of the uh, performance of the company. Okay. And sir, uh, uh, related to this, like your assets and your rental income, there is a segment called assets. So, like, why has it fallen, like, from nine crores to one crore? Like, why? Why? So, what? What we were also uh, very active on is that there were certain, uh, uh, you know, uh, transactions where we were contracted where we were just, you know, providing the furniture fixtures and also the managed office services, where the space was not something that we were acquiring. Uh, we were taking uh, on the lease from the landlord. But only the furniture were provided to a particular customer on the space which they own, and and then we provide them the managed office services also. So that is the asset leasing business what we are talking about. But you know in that business what happens is that the controls are limited as we have seen and observed over the period. Uh, so we are trying to reduce our operations because there is too much of demand on the space leasing side, and uh, you know our ability to focus on. The asset leasing business is getting limited, and obviously, as I explained, the control aspects. So we are kind of reducing those exposure, and rather also focusing more and more towards the space rental businesses. So my final question would be like, what would be your guidance on the rental income, like for the full year? 
we are fairly confident that you know for the full year we'll be crossing around uh, you know i mean right now as i said that we are already at 47000 seats uh, by the end of this finance year we'll easily be around 65 to 70000 plus kind of seats and uh, on an average if you have to ascertain that what would be the average occupied seat during the entire year if you do an annualized average we are confident mm-hmm. that we should be able to have around 50 55000 seats on an annualized basis at an average uh, uh, rental of about 7000 uh, rupee per seat kind of a thing so we are looking at more upwards of 350 crores uh, on the top line that uh, that we will be able to project for this uh, financial year Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, please. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Due to time constraint, we'll take this as the last question. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Nikhil Bhuta, whole time director of EFC India Limited, for closing comments. Uh, first of all, thank you very much for showing so much of faith and interest in our company and coming out. Uh, in such large capacity to support us and encourage us. Uh, so we thank you all for joining today's call. We appreciate your continued support and engagement with EFC India Limited. As we move forward, we remain committed to driving growth and delivering value to our shareholders and all the you know participants to the overall ecosystem. Should you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to reach out to us or to our agency. and we wish you a great weekend and a great quarter coming uh i'm really you know extremely sorry that we're not able to attend to the calls for each of the participants but due to the time constraint uh, we'll have to shorten this call at this point of time and and put an end to this call thank you so much moderator please thank you sir ladies and gentlemen on behalf of efc india limited that concludes today's session If there are any question that have remain unanswered due to paucity of time we can request you to kindly send us on the same to compliance@efclimited.in and also you can connect with fortuna pr for the same thank you for your participation you may now disconnect your lines thank you